Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Edward Euler, the host of Heavy Cardboard, and wanted to give you my first impressions of GMT Games and John Butterfield's Space Corp. So we just finished playing this not too long ago, and I wrote down some notes and wanted to give you, like I said, a first impression take on this. My first initial thought was this was going to be a heavy space theme, economic space corporation type game. This is not that. It is much lighter than I expected, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just I really, really, I wasn't expecting that because I'll be honest, I have, I've avoided listening or reading or getting into big discussions about this game. I've heard some positive buzz about the game, but not the specifics about it. So I came into this with kind of a pure, I don't know what this is going to be, but you still get that initial gut imp impression on what a game was going to be. And this wasn't it. It's not an economic game. It's very much a Euro engine building with a big race element and money is points, but there is no economic game. In a sense, it's it's a hand building game in which you're going to be drawing a bunch of cards uh, called the research action and then playing these cards, either one card, multiple cards, or to be able to explore space. And the game is played over three eras. Each era has its own board. And in era one, you're going from Earth out to Mars. In era two, you're going from Mars out through the solar system. And then in era three, you're going from out to interstellar space to colonize out there. The game's just a lot more simple than I expected. When I think GMT games, I think, okay, war game company and, and big rule books and all this. And it's just far simpler than I expected. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but over the course of, I'd say it took us about three and a half hours, including kind of learning as we go, which I would highly recommend teaching the game that way. The first era, the game does an excellent job of this in which the first era you're going through and only needing to know the rules of the first era. And then the second era, it adds on a little bit more. And the third era, it adds on a little bit more. So I think that was done really, really well. Also, one other really positive aspect of this game is the there are extremely fast turns. Some turns literally can take three seconds. Some can take a handful more seconds than that. But nonetheless, the game is constantly moving along, which is also a positive there. The end of the, the way the end of an era works, though, I found a little bit strange. There are two different ways that an era can end. There are contracts that you can fulfill. So there are goals that can be met. And if you meet those goals, then, or if six of the seven goals between all the players are met, then the era ends. Everybody who, except who triggered that, gets one last turn. Okay, that's easy enough. No, no worries there. However, if the deck runs out, then players may pass whenever they choose to take no more actions or they must pass at the end of a round or at the end when they have no actions that they can perform and there are 10 different options of actions that you can do on your turn however once two players pass in a three or four player game then everybody else gets one last turn but if two players don't pass you can just keep ping-ponging back and forth to where you're just ramping up a ton of actions and if somebody didn't have a big hand of cards because there's no hand limit in this game then you can just kind of cooperatively and I say that loosely it's not a co-op game but you can almost collude to not pass to help each other in a sense that I'm going to be able to keep playing actions as long as you don't pass and as long as I don't pass you can keep ping pong it you know and doing more actions so it felt a little unfair and unsatisfying a little bit however I will say that this being a first game I also thought that you could kind of you could kind of use it as a weapon because oh if somebody's loading up cards and being out and researching a lot and drawing a big old hand of cards and if somebody passes early and then I'm like oh you know what I'm gonna pass you get one more action and now all those actions that they spent drawing all these cards is wasted which we didn't explore that, 
but I'm curious to see how that might play out in a future game. So there's that. That said, there's not a ton of interaction in this game, and it's a bit of a race game. And I'm not super keen on race games in general, although the first two eras were pretty exciting. I really enjoyed. You're going out exploring, you're you're flipping over exploration tiles and finding out what kind of planet or what kind of moon or what kind of whatever that you're going to be uh, exploring out there and what it provides, whether it's water or maybe in later uh, eras, uh, alien um, technology, stuff like that. So the first two eras felt very similar and felt like it's leading up to something. And then in the third era, the game kind of flipped on its head. And the third era changed things so significantly, I don't know that it was for the better. But I'm not saying it wasn't. Just, it removed almost all of the little interaction that there was within the game to begin with. And then it kind of felt like just a giant scoring round that lasted a fair bit of time. Because to simulate how far you're traveling in space, you need more and more... Uh, movement points starts out at the beginning of the game you need three or four to be able to move to go somewhere by the third phase or the third era you need upwards of 120 and so you have multipliers so you have you know five plus six plus i don't know five so maybe you're at 16 and then you multiply it times four and then you double that and so you're able to do this but when you get to an area it then takes so long for for that pro- for you to be able to go and explore and build bases and do all those things that it just felt unnecessarily long like usually when there's a crescendo of a game that last phase or that last thing that you do tends to be a lot more truncated because okay you got your engine going you got this and that whatever and then the game ends this one it just felt unsatisfying like you're just doing things just to get points and I don't know if I really enjoyed the way that felt however there were other players in the game that uh, felt kind of similar to me one of the players also thought the exact opposite to where the first two eras were kind of eh, but the third era where the payoff is for what you've been building up to it was a better better way to go yeah, a more enjoyable era so there's that so My overall initial impression kind of was, wait, that's it? And I don't know how much meat there is here. It's a first play. Keep that in mind. It's a first impression. Uh, I'm going to be playing it a couple more times, plus we have the live stream coming up later on this week. Uh, I did enjoy the card play aspect of being, and as well as being able to use other players' tableaus, so... Uh, the only penalty for using someone else's tableau that they have built up is they get to draw a card off the top of the deck, which drawing cards is power because cards give you potentially either more actions or better actions. So there's that. But the game felt a bit generic and maybe a little bit more simple than, than what I was hoping it would be. Don't get me wrong. Not everything should be high frontier. Trust me, I don't. Plus, there is High Frontier already. I just, I don't know. Maybe maybe I wanted the game to feel like it had more in it. And the randomness of the card draws. The randomness is not insignificant in this game. So I don't know. So where do I stand on this? Legitimately, I'm excited to play this game more. And I'm excited to see if... My first impressions are validated or if, oh, wait, no, that was just the first play. There's actually more stuff here than at first blush. So I'm legitimately excited to play it more. I just don't know how much more there's going to be. We'll see. At the end of the live stream, that will have been three or four games at that point. So we'll see how things go at that point. So that is my first impressions of Space Corp from GMT. Have you played Space Corp? If so, post a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you haven't, what are you wanting the game to be and and what most interests you about the game? Leave a comment about that and, and let me hear it. So that said, this is 
a video that's part of a new series, a Game of the Month series, where we're breaking out the game and covering it in a lot of different ways. So I would love to get your feedback on that as well. So thanks everybody for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out the podcast over on heavycardboard.com. And remember, we're going to be live streaming this on Friday night, uh, 1900 Mountain Daylight Time, midnight UTC. Hope you join us for that. That said, again, I'm Edward, and thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.